In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, how is design current calculated? Now, just before we explain the answer to this question, please be aware that this video is one of a series that we've made on the subject of electrical design. They can be viewed individually, or you can click the link in the description below to view them as part of a free online training package to help you with your CPD, and you'll even receive a certificate to prove that you've completed the course. Having found out the supply characteristics in our previous video, we're now going to move on and start designing our final circuit. Okay, so where do we start with designing the actual circuit itself and figuring out which of these protective devices from BG Electrical we're going to protect it with and what size cable we'll need? Bizarrely, we start at the end by considering what load is connected to the circuit. We need to figure out how much current the circuit is going to draw. Why is this so important? Well, we're going to see as we go through this process that much of what we do as electricians and in electrical design is concerned with one thing, and that is heat. It's a fundamental fact of electricity that when you pass current through a conductor, it generates heat. And if you carry out the design or installation of the circuit incorrectly, that heat can start a fire, causing damage to the electrical installation, the property, or worst of all, the people in the property. In fact, this is what caused the electrical regulations to come into existence in the first place. They were initially created due to pressure from insurance companies that were a bit fed up of paying out for fires caused by shoddy electrical installation. The other major hazard caused by the heat in the cables is damage to the insulation that surrounds the conductors. That insulation is in place to prevent people or animals coming into contact with the live parts and getting a shock. If too much current flows through the conductor, the heat can get too much and the insulation can burn, melt or become ineffective, leading to a risk of electric shock. The amount of heat generated by the current flowing through the cables will depend on a few things, but the most fundamental is the current flowing through the conductor. To figure out how much current the circuit will pull, we need to know how much power the load uses. Let's say we've got a fairly simple item of equipment like an electric boiler. Looking at the specification for this Fusion Comet boiler from the electric heating company, you can see that it's got a rating of 9 kilowatts. So how do we figure out the amount of current that will pass through the conductor feeding it? We start off with the basic power formula, which is power equals current times voltage, or P equals I times V. Then we shuffle it round to make the current the subject of the equation. We're left with I equals P over V, or current equals power divided by voltage. Now at this stage, we're going to adjust the letters we use slightly, as they'll come up later in the process. They still mean similar things, but you'll see the value of it as we move on. Looking to BS7671, we find the specific symbols we want to use in part 2, which covers definitions and, in particular, the section Symbols Used in BS7671. Design current is measured in amps, as we'd expect, but the I, which is the mathematical symbol we use for current, is modified with a lowercase b in the subscript. Now, we may be used to using V as the mathematical symbol in our calculations for Ohm's Law at college, but the regs uses a capital U instead. This is because there's different kinds of voltage and it gets a bit confusing using the same letter for the mathematical and the unit symbol. For the purposes of our calculation, we need to use this U with what looks like an O in the subscript, but is actually a zero. You'll often hear this referred to as UO, and that's what I'll be calling it through these videos because older habits die hard, but it's technically U0. And this represents the nominal AC RMS line voltage to Earth. So in other words, the nominal voltage. So we'll change the I to an I with a lowercase b in the subscript here. This now means the design current of the circuit. And we'll change the V to U with a zero in the subscript to mean nominal voltage. In the UK, it will have a value of 230 volts AC. So our formula is now IB is equal to P over UO, or design current is equal to power over nominal voltage. So let's put our numbers in. We said this electric boiler has a rating of 9 kilowatts, and before we put this into our formula, we need to change the kilowatts to watts, and we do that by multiplying it by 1,000, because that kilo, that K, just means groups of 1,000. So that becomes 9,000 watts. Pop the 230 volts in at the bottom for nominal voltage, and we've got 9,000 divided by 230, and that gives us 39.13 amps. Now again, for more seasoned viewers, you know that there are other things that could affect the design current for a circuit, things like power factor on inductive or capacitive loads, and diversity on certain circuits as well. And as we go through this process, you may think of other elements that could come into play that we haven't considered. But just bear in mind, we're looking here at our first steps to the process of design, and we'll cover many additional points in other training packages, so stay tuned for those. So there we go. That's how to calculate design current. 
To find out how to select the correct protective device for a circuit, specifically in this case from the selection from BG Electrical, check out this video right here. Or click the link in the description below to watch it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD and you'll receive a certificate as well. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.